Welcome back friends, in this video we're going to create a new enemy type and implement the enemy spawning functionality. Let's get started. We created this enemy scene and this scene has all the basic functionality that we want. Now I want to create a new enemy type and I know that the same basic functionality is needed for this new type. I could go ahead and create a new scene and recreate everything that we have here and add the extra functionality that I want. But instead of doing that, we can just use an inherited scene. Let me show you what that looks like. To create one, we need to go to the scene menu here and click on new inherited scene. Next, we need to pick the scene that we want to inherit from. In this case, it's going to be the enemy scene. This will create a new inherited scene for us and it will look exactly like the enemy scene. In fact, at the beginning, it will be identical. I'm going to rename this scene to be the diver enemy and save this inside of the scenes folder. When you create an inherited scene, you will get all the functionality from the scene that you inherited from. So this scene, even though it's a different scene than the enemy scene, has all the nodes that the enemy scene has and it also has the script, the enemy script attached to it. The nodes that we inherited are written in yellow, as you can see, and I can't really change these from here. For example, I can't delete an inherited node. As you can see, it is telling me can't operate on nodes this current scene inherits from. So we can't really delete them and change their position, but we can change their properties in the inspector. So for example, for this enemy, I can use a different texture. Let's use this spaceship 4. And the sprite is a little bit larger, so I'm going to make this 0.5 for the scale. As you can see, we can change the properties from the inspector, but we can't really mess with the nodes in the scene tab. But that is, like I said, only for the inherited nodes. We could create our own nodes here if we wanted to. So for example, I could create a new node here, and with this one, I can mess with it, delete it, it's only the inherited ones that I can't really change. And also, if you make a change in the parent scene, in this case, the enemy, so for example, in here, if we change the name of the sprite here to sprite from sprite2d and save, as you can see, that change is reflected in the inherited scene, the diver enemy. Okay, great, so because we did that, I think the sprite's texture property got reset because we made a change to it from the parent scene, so you need to watch out for things like that. So let's do that again and give this guy the correct texture and put the scale back. Let's save this. So yeah, enough about explaining the inherited scenes and uh, let me talk about what I'm trying to do here. So this is a new enemy type that we're gonna have. This one will be significantly faster. That is why I called it the diver enemy. I'm gonna go to the root node here and set the speed of this to be 400 instead of the 150 of the regular enemy. So if you go back to the game scene and instance one of these here, you will see that it is significantly faster. So that is just a new diff type of enemy that we're going to have. And because I now showed you how to create a new enemy type, you're free to create 10 different types of enemies here. So by creating an inherited scene just like this, we have a new type that has all the same functionality as the normal enemy, and it only took us like 30 seconds to make this. So in a case like this, this is okay to use, but this can get messy if you try to make changes to the, to the base scene and down the line, like I said, this, this can get messy. So I don't really recommend using inherited scenes too much, but in certain cases, they're helpful. You can also create a script here as well and inherit from the enemy script if you want to create more you know, functionality inside of a script, but only for the diver enemy, you can also do that. We're not going to do that in this case. But yeah, now that we have a different enemy type, we're going to move on to spawning this enemy and the regular enemy inside of the game scene. Okay, so let's go back to the game scene. And in here, we want to spawn enemies from the top in random locations. We're not gonna need these enemies anymore, so I'm gonna delete these. And in here, I'm gonna create a new node 2D 
and this one is going to be the enemy container. So just like we did for the laser, we're going to have a container node to have the enemies in so that the game scene is nice and tidy. Inside of the script, I first want to create an export variable here. Up here, let's create a new variable. And this is going to be the enemy scenes. And this is going to be an array. So I'm going to give this a type. And this is going to be an array of packed scenes. And it's going to be an empty scene by empty array by default. And if we take a look at the root node, this is what that looks like. In here, we're going to set the size to be two because we only have two different enemies. If you have more, be sure to set this to the amount of enemy scenes that you have. And then we're going to go into our file system scenes. And then we're going to drag our enemies here. So we essentially have the enemy scenes, the packed scenes inside of this array. And now I'm going to create a timer node inside of the game scene. So let's create a timer here. We're going to call this the enemy spawn timer. I'm going to set this to be auto start and the wait time is going to be one. I'm going to put this at the top and let's create a reference to this. Even though we don't really need it. Now that I think about it, let's see. We might not need this, but okay. I'm gonna connect the signal. Yeah, I guess I could use this to connect the signal or I can just do it from the inspector here. Both ways are okay. So let's connect the signal, the timeout signal. And whenever this timer times out, we want to spawn a new enemy. We have the packed scenes inside of, a, inside of an array here. So we want to pick a random packed scene instance it and add it as a child. And we're gonna add it as a child of the enemy container. Let's create a reference to that as well. And down here we can create a new enemy instance. I'm gonna call that E. This is going to be the enemy scenes dot pick random to pick a random packed scene. And then we're gonna call the instantiate function. I think I spelled that wrong. Let's see. Instantiate. Okay. So this will create a new enemy instance for us. And then we want to, well, at the end, we of course want to add this as a child of the enemy container. But before we do that, let's give this a position. For starters, I'm going to set the position to be, let's see, what was our window width? 540. So let's say 270 by zero. In fact, let's say 50 so that we can see, see it actually. So this will create a new instance, set its position and add it as a child of the scene. Okay. Let's run the game and see if this works. And you can see that we're spawning an enemy every time the timer times out and it is a random one between the regular enemy and the diver enemy scene. Great. Now the next step is spawning these at the top at a random position and a little bit above the scene so that we don't see it spawning like these guys here. Okay. That is going to be this line here. So instead of giving it a constant value like 270 here, we want to pick a random X position. So the X, X is going to be random, but the Y is going to be the same. So the X is going to be random F range. This will give us a random floating point value from a range that we're going to determine. And the range is going to be from, well, the window width is from zero to 540, right? but we don't want to use the full width. We want to have a little bit of a margin. So I'm going to say 50 to 500. And we can change this if some enemies are outside of the screen or something like that. And the Y is going to be, well, let's leave it at 50 at first. Now, as you can see, we're spawning the enemies at a random X. And the only thing we need to do now is taking the Y and, you know, spawning it 
above the screen. And to do that, we can simply say negative 50 instead of 50. This way we can't really see the enemy when it spawns. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, so that is going to be it for spawning the enemy. There's also one thing I want to do for the different enemy types actually that I forgot to do, and that is giving them different hit points. So currently, both the enemy and the diver enemy has a single hit point. They, they both die with a single laser, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having different enemy types. That just makes the diver enemy much more stronger than the regular enemy. So what I want to do is I want the regular enemy to have two hit points so that it's a little bit more difficult to kill, but in turn it is slower. And I want the diver enemy to have a single hit point so that it is more easy to kill, but it's faster, so it kind of balances it out. To do that, we're gonna take a look at the enemy script here. We're gonna create a new export variable called HP, and I'm gonna set this to be one by default. And for the diver enemy, we're gonna set this to be two in the, in sorry, for diver enemy, it's gonna be one. So for the normal enemy, we're gonna set this to be two. Okay. And in here, inside of the script, when the laser touches uh, an enemy, we're not gonna call die. We're gonna call a function called take damage. And then inside of the enemy script, we need to create this new function called take damage. And this will actually take in a variable called amount. So when this function is called, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say HP minus equals amount. So we're gonna subtract whatever amount we were passed from the hit points of the enemy. And then we're gonna do a check. So if HP is less than or equal to zero, this means the enemy just died, so we can call die. Otherwise, we're not gonna die. So now from the laser script, we need to give this a damage. I'm gonna just say one. We can also turn this into a variable here, so some lasers can have more damage. So instead of saying one, we can say damage here. And if you want to create different types of lasers, you can give them different amount of power from here. Okay, great. Now when a laser touches an enemy, it applies damage. And if the enemy's HP goes below zero or equal to zero, it dies. So now if we run the game, we should be able to kill the diver enemies with one hit. Oh, we can't. Why is that? Well, the regular enemies seem to be fine, but for some reason, diver enemies also have two hit points. Let's see. Uh, oh yeah, they have two hit points here. Why is that? Hmm. Did I? No, I did set this to be one. Oh, it's probably because they're inherited. Yeah, see? <laughs> okay, that's funny. Because they inherit from the enemy, even though enemy has this, you know, even though the enemy script has it one as default, because we changed it in the inspector and because the diver enemy inherits from the enemy scene, it also got the change as its own default value. So it's kind of complicated there, but uh, we just need to set it to be one in the diver enemies uh, inspector variables here. Now we should be able to kill the diver enemies with a single laser. Yep. And the normal enemies should be two laser hits. Yep, that seems okay. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this lecture. In this one, we first created a new enemy type using inherited scenes. We gave it a different speed and a different sprite texture to, you know, differentiate it from the regular enemy. We also created this HP variable for the enemies and the diver enemy has one HP and the regular enemy has two. So that was the different enemy type. We also did the enemy spawning code inside of the game scene here. We created a timer node and connected its signal in here inside of the game script. And whenever the timer times out, we're creating a new instance of a random enemy that we pick. We're giving it a random position and we're adding it as a child of the game scene. And that's gonna be it for this lecture. If you found it helpful, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. 
If you want to learn Godot, I have a course where I teach the basics of Godot at a much more slower pace for beginners. If that is interesting to you, check the link in the description. Again, thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one.